Hi, uh, my name is Janice McCullough, and I am the daughter of the late, great Bernie Mac. Um, Walter asked me to say something inspiring. So, uh, since I love and respect Walter and everything that he's done and is doing, I was more than happy to oblige. Um, but also, since I'm such an overthinker, I really didn't know what to really share with you guys. Um, had no idea at all. So then I just took a step back and thought, okay, I'll just um, share a little remnant of my life and hope you find something inspiring. And um, if you do, great. Whatever resonates with you, take it. Uh, whatever doesn't, leave it. I promise I won't be mad. <laughs> and um, so here goes. Um, like I said, I am the daughter of Bernie Mac. Um, only child of Bernie Mac, actually. And when I say that to people, they have a lot of conceptions in their head, um, a lot of conceptualized ideas of what that means. And they usually turn out to be misconceptions because people think my life has just been so easy, so glamorous, and it was just so wonderful. First of all, he wasn't famous my entire life, so I did not grow up uh, this privileged, you know, celebrity kid. Um, second of all, he was not by any means an easy man to live with so it wasn't you know glitz and glamour and just ah spoiled daddy's girl not at all um i will say that um being his child not be well in some ways he played a part in it too but a lot of it um was my own issues and the issues of other people that I allowed to affect me. They came with a lot of implications. And one of the biggest struggles that I've had my entire life is being comfortable in my own skin. And as far back as I can remember, I have always been known as my father's child. Um, like I said, he wasn't always famous. So the names have been different. You know, sometimes it was, that's Black's daughter, because he used to be called Black. Um, sometimes it was, that's Beanie's daughter. And sometimes it was that's Mac's daughter, and then he became famous, and it was that's Bernie Mac's daughter. But I can't ever remember a time in my life where I wasn't known as my father's child. And it wasn't until he became famous that the struggle for my identity really magnified. Um, it was always there because my dad was extremely overbearing. Bless his heart. I know it came from a good place, but he was really overbearing. And um, I just learned how to become a grade A people pleaser because of that. Because if you didn't agree with him, there was probably hell to pay um, for it. So I just learned how to become a people pleaser. And once he became famous, it was just crazy because all of a sudden, everything about me became diminished. Um, I could no longer do anything, have anything, be anything without it being attributed to my dad. Um, when I got honors in school, oh, you know, they did that because that's Bernie Mac's daughter. Um, <laughs> you know, if I had on a new outfit, oh yeah, she coming in these crazy designer clothes because her father's Bernie Mac. Never mind the fact that the outfit came from Express. <laughs> you know, and one of the stores that everybody else was shopping at, but because it was on me, it had mm -hmm. to be, yo, oh, that's Bernie Mac's daughter, so who? Um, anything that I did, and what ended up happening with me, because I wasn't comfortable with who I was, I became really resentful of that. I mean, really resentful. Um, to the point where when I would hear people go, oh, you're Bernie Mac's daughter, right? I would literally cringe on the inside and I would feel like, no, damn it, my name is Janice. I am more than Bernie Mac's daughter. But the problem was, I couldn't tell you who Janice was. Um, I had dreams, I had goals of my own, but I was so scared to live them out one, like I said, one, because of my own issues, and two, because I didn't want anyone saying, oh, it's just because this Brain Max order. Like, I love to write. Love. Always did. Should have gone to school as an English major or creative writing or something in that field, journalism, all the things that I love. No, because I didn't want to say, I didn't want it to happen. Well, if I became a great writer, I didn't want people to say, oh, it's only because it's Brain Max order. So what did I do? I went to school as a biology pre-med major. 
hated every minute minute of it and got all the way to my junior year and then decided to change to psychology. And while I'm fascinated by psychology, it's not something I want to do for the rest of my life. Yeah, it took me getting a bachelor's and a master's in that to learn it though. And um, it just, even the relationships that I had, uh, because my self-esteem was where it was, which was kind of low, I unconsciously sought out people who I needed to, you know, verify me in my sight. I was like a lost puppy, like, please love me. Please tell me I'm lovable. Please tell me I'm great. Please, 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 please. And it was because I didn't believe those things about myself. Mm -hmm. And so you, of course, can imagine what happened. I met people who took advantage of me, who used me, um, and just made poor choices in my life. You know, at 16, I found myself pregnant um, and having an abortion because I didn't stand up for myself because I ended up having sex with my boyfriend when I didn't want to. And I never told my parents that. So now the guilt and shame that I feel for, number one, not saying no. Now two, ending up an unwed teenage pregnant mom three now having an abortion and four not telling my parents that just made my self-esteem spiral to an all-time low so I really especially when it came to men I sought out you know men who I felt would punish me the way that I thought I deserved to be punished because I didn't think I deserved any better so then enter college and I meet my now ex-husband and I allowed him to treat me like crap for nine years because, like I said, that's what I thought I deserved. And for me, coming into a place of loving myself and being comfortable in my own skin came painfully, as do most of the lessons we learn in life. It came through, one, the birth of my daughter, and two, the death of my father. The two most pivotal people in my life were able to teach me how to love myself, probably unbeknownst and unintentionally but it happened um my entry into motherhood kicked my tail okay <laughs> my daughter as an infant was a terror and all the changes that I went through and looking at her and all that I wanted for her life gave me the strength to say enough of this bad marriage I've got to walk away and when my dad died it just kind of made something click within me um as painful as his death was for me, there was a comfort that I found in it because I realized my dad lived life on his own terms. He did exactly what he wanted to do. And I started thinking to myself, you know, if I were to die today, could I say the same thing? And the answer was no. I had lived my life doing what everyone else expected or wanted of me. Like I said, I learned to be a grade A people pleaser. And there's nothing wrong with wanting the people in your life to be happy, but there's something wrong when you want to make them more happy than you want to make yourself happy. When you want to make them happier, or when you make their happiness more important than your own. And that's what I was doing. Everyone else was more important than I. And that was the problem. That's why I felt this just longing in my soul to just break out and it's still a process I still learn new things about myself every day but there is a piece that I have today that I never had before and we all have that capacity we all it, it's it's a choice and I will not dare sit here and make it sound like it's just so simple and easy because I know a lot of times when we we talk about being positive and making choices we make it sound so easy it's not easy I will say this it's simple it's a matter of choice if you want better you've got to choose better it's a matter of choice however I have found that the simpler things in life are usually the more hard things to do and you know the, this I have just found to be completely true but like I said nothing beats the peace that I have today because I learned to live life on my own terms. I've learned to look at myself in the mirror and tell myself, you're great, you're beautiful, you're wonderful, you're divine, and why not? I am a creation of the most high, as are you. And I think for most of us, all of us actually, we won't have the lives that we want to have until we're able to look at ourselves as such, until we're able to realize how divine we are, how wonderful 
and beautifully made we were. I don't think we hear that enough. I think we focus way too much on negativity and flaws. And I know I'm the first to beat myself up. It's a habit I'm still learning to break, but I've learned to be more comfortable with myself, flaws and all, and that has helped me. And while I may not be exactly where I wanna be in life, I know I'm on my way and you can be too. And so, like I said, um, I hope me sharing my little story um, I hope something resonated with you. If it did, take it with you. Be blessed and much love to you.